Hey guys, Amy here with Bright Agrotech again, and we're in the Bright Agrotech Zip Farm where we have been conducting some microgreen trials. Now, if you've seen our other microgreen trial videos, then you can learn about what we're finding about seed density and planting time and the different tastes and appearance of these crops. But in this video, we wanted to answer some of the questions that you left in the comments for those videos. You guys had a lot of questions about the materials that we're using in our setup. So we're just gonna give you a quick uh, tour of what we do and how everything is set up, our process. So to start with, we get our seeds from Johnny Seeds. I know that some people also get them from Baker Creek Heirloom or Everwild Farms. It depends partly on the cost, but you also want to get high quality seed because germination rate is really important. The cost of microgreen seeds vary hugely. Anywhere from like 10 bucks a pound to hundreds of dollars a pound. The craziest one that I've seen is marigold seeds, which are really light. So there's just millions of them in a pound. And that was several hundred dollars. But usually they'll be somewhere between like 20 and $70 a pound. Once we have our seeds, we plant them, and we've been using this hemp medium mat. Now, a lot of people are using coca coir or soil because it's cheaper and you can reuse it a lot. We have stuck with the hemp medium mat just because it's so much easier to harvest, and we can harvest with that electric knife you've seen in those videos. It also makes it really easy to, um, to water them without a big mess. So we've been using these 10 by 20 inch trays. Now these ones have the mesh bottom so that we can water them from below. It's way easier to irrigate when you can just put it on a timer and have it run a couple times a day, which is how we set up our flood tray tables back here. But some people are using solid bottom trays. It just depends on your setup and how much time you're willing to put into it. Another thing to consider is the height of the tray. As you can see, these ones are pretty deep, like two inches or so. And that means that to harvest, we have to pull the mesh out of the tray to get close, like within a half inch of that mesh. Some people are using shallower trays, which could be a really good idea. You might not have to take the media out of the tray to harvest. You could just go right over the top with that knife. So you can see our flood tray tables behind us and we'll get close up on those in just a minute. But one of you guys had a question about the pump we're using. Now we're using this 550 pump. It's an active aqua submersible pump and we just stick it in the sump system uh, below the trays and it pumps up to the top and then, and then trickles down to the bottom again. It's very simple. This one might honestly be a little bit oversized for this system. The important thing is that you look at the head height, which is the point from your water or your pump to the highest point of irrigation, and make sure that your pump can handle that. So with this one, on the box it comes with a, oh let's see, where is it? There it is. It comes with this table that shows head height versus GPH. With this system, you're only going to be doing a few gallons per hour when you irrigate. The important thing to look at is again that head height. And at a head height of probably five or six feet here, we need at least, we probably need at least a 400 GPH pump um, for this brand specifically. But for other people, you might be able to get along with something a little bit uh, smaller than that. Just depends on your system. So this is our seedling cart XL. It's kind of the commercial version of our seedling cart that we recently moved to. Let's start at the bottom and then move our way up and I'll show you kind of what's going on in this system. So here at the bottom, we have our sump tank. Really simple, it's a black tank. There's a cover on here that we get to cover it with so no, nothing falls in there. And we are uh, keeping it shaded so that not a ton of algae grows in there. And we just have the uh, simple pump down here. Oh, let's see. Basically the same one that I just showed you in our box. And that pumps it up, pumps our water up all the way to the top rack here. So as you can see, this is the 550 uh, submersible pump that we just showed you in the box. It's a little bit dirtier and slimier. I can feel it. And this just um, goes, we use poly from the top of this pump to, to uh, irrigate all the way up to our top rack here. Then this other piece of poly here comes from the lowest flood tray to drain out once the siphons have done their work and sent water all the way down the system. So from the pump down in our sump tank, we have water pumping up into this top flood tree. 
the water pumps into here, it fills up to a certain level, and then at the end of the tray, we have two elbows that are sucking that water through a siphon down to the next flood tray. And you can kind of see that happening in this lower flood tray here. Same thing happens in that tray. It fills up with water, the elbows on the other side kick into a siphon, and it siphons water down tray to tray until it reaches the very bottom. Now you can kind of see inside the tray here that we have different levels um, going on, and that keeps the water from drowning our seedlings or getting too much on the greens and causing mold issues. Um, I know some of you guys had a question about that. If you don't have a tray that already has indentations like this built into the tray, you can get like PVC or something like that to set those trays up um, just so that they're just touching the water level when it irrigates. And we have this running twice a day right now. You can run it more uh, depending on how hot it is in your growing area. If it's super dry or you have a ton of like dry air flowing across those, they might dry out faster. But we found that on, in an indoor farm where we are, twice a day is just fine. So if you want to find out more about how this is built and how it works, go check out the assembly video for our seedling cart XL. So between planting the seeds onto our hemp mats and sticking them into the fledged tray system, we need to put them in an environment that's good for them to germinate. And the reason for that is, I mean, it's good to do it with regular seedlings. You can see we have some going on here. But with microgreens, it's especially important because you have an open face and those seeds are just exposed to the air. They don't have the soil keeping in moisture and heat. So the propagation chamber basically replicates a soil environment for those microgreens. Down at the bottom of the chamber, you can see we have water and a heating element, and that keeps it really humid, like 80 or 90% humidity in there. Um, and then it keeps it really warm as well. As soon as the microgreens break their shell or germinate, we stick them into the flood system. If you guys are interested in learning more about this propagation chamber, go ahead and uh, check out the videos that we have on our YouTube channel. So you probably noticed there aren't a ton of microgreens growing in the system right now. We're on a bit of a hiatus from our trials, but we're gonna be back in a couple weeks with more videos, so stay tuned for that. If you're interested in any of the materials we've been using, the hemp mats, the pump, the system, etc., go ahead and check out shop.brightagrotech.com where we have a lot of those listed. As always, you guys have great comments and questions and ideas, so please share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them.